Well, when I joined Sylvania, it was a relatively new research and development facility, uh, primarily military oriented, almost exclusively military oriented. What year was that? That you started there. Nineteen fifty-six. I retired in fifty-five, and although I lined up the job and everything, I didn't start until. No, I started in the late fifty-five. Yeah, and uh, they had a. Uh, they called it a marketing department, but it wasn't really marketing. You weren't trying to sell something. It was an interface with uh, other military contractors where more than one contractor would team together for some big piece of equipment that Uncle Sam needed. And uh, like we, uh, the biggest job they had when I moved in was the development of a family of 19 traveling wave tubes, which was a pretty new innovation in the field of uh, electronic uh, instrumentation. Uh, for the passive defense system for the Hustler aircraft, to make it immune from radar uh, vision from an enemy fighter, yeah. and uh, things like that. We we developed the uh, while I was there the uh, anti-intrusion system for the Minuteman silos and another electronic development and, and and so on. It was very very interesting. And when I joined, they had one man in charge of call it marketing, and a secretary. And they knew they needed a whole staff more of people, and someone who could organize, who could interview and hire people. And I grew it to 19, a total of 19 people before, now this was in, uh, there were a number of laboratories there. One was purely defense. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, uh, the manager there was interested in getting someone who, who he could leave in charge administratively while he was off on one of his many trips to Washington mm -hmm. to other major contractors and so on. And he asked my boss, the marketing manager, if he could have, offer me a job. And Ray McClinic, my boss, asked me one day, he said, how would you feel about going to work with Oz Funding's land? He'd like to ask you. He'd like to ask you if you'd be interested in some. And uh, anyway, it went from there, and uh, I moved up okay. to a much better job. I had done, I'd really built the department I was in anyway. You were hired initially as, what, an assistant to the manager in that department? Or? Uh, I was hired, it's difficult to explain, I didn't even have a job description. Mm -hmm. Nobody knew what job, to, I practically wrote my own by living yeah. it. Yeah. I made my own job description. Yeah. They told me what they needed, okay. and as I felt my way along, if yeah. something was needed, I added it, mm -hmm. and hired the people to run it. I heard, I hired a, uh, contract administrator. Uh, contract administration is a big thing uh, and get pretty complex. Mm -hmm. And I decided I'd better get somebody who knows the government end of contract administration. So I called the uh, Sixth Army headquarters up at the Presidio uh, and asked uh, if they had anybody, any recent retirees on their retirement list who had been a contracting, purchasing and contracting officer. And I hired Nick LaPera, who had been, and he'd retired. Um, did you, did your job, well I know that you sort of created the job description, but did, what, what did you end up, by the time you left Sylvania, had you, had you done a lot of different types of oh, things? Oh yes. When the, for instance, when, <coughs> when the uh, prototype was approved for the government on the anti-intrusion systems for the Minuteman silo, they were going to have to produce, manufacture something like 257 of these for all the silos all over the country. And uh, for this they needed a big manufacturing plant. And there was no way they could do it in those facilities in Mountain View, so they built a plant where they could get relatively inexpensive labor in Santa Cruz. 
and they sent me down to administer engineering. Not technically, but administratively. And when, uh, when manufacturing engineering problems would arise, and this is real touch and go stuff, they're pushing the state of the art, even changes in temperature, heat transfer potentials of a metal changing with the difference in, in temperatures could throw a whole system off. Mm -hmm. And uh, they'd, they'd have to go back to the research and development engineers at Mountain View to solve the problem when one arose. And this that liaison, administrative liaison between Mountain View and Santa Cruz, Santa Cruz and Mountain View. And uh, uh, I spent five years down there to the week while that job was going on. Uh, from there, how. I got transferred back when I saw <clears throat> one of the young engineers, Sylvania, far-seeing, had taken some of their brightest recent hirees engineers of various disciplines and uh, would send them at company expense for their advanced degree work and pay them for it. Pay them, kept them on the payroll, and paid their way to college. One of these was a young man named Bert McMurtry, and he was, he was a whiz. He was a genius, a real genius. And he loved his work, and he was so enthused, and we had supported his, his uh, going to uh, Stanford and uh, got his uh, PhD. And Sylvania had appointed him director of, el of an electro-optics research laboratory. And this came out in the, the bulletin, you know, and I sent him a little note. I knew him. I knew him from the days when he was just an engineer with a bachelor degree. And I, I uh, instead of congratulating him, I offered my condolences. I said, I know, I know uh, the administrative problems that you're going to run into as the head of the laboratory problems of keeping overhead costs down and things like that. And incidentally, if you need an administrative assistant, I'm available. He got me on the phone and I ended up as his administrator. Oh my gosh. And it was from that job that I retired. Okay. <laughs> and that was back in Sunnyvale. That was back in, yeah. yeah. So you pretty much enjoyed Savannah? Oh, I did. I did. It was more like more like being on a college campus than it was mm -hmm. being having a job in industry. Yeah. You know. And it was I was so enthused with that work. And it seemed as though every bit of experience I'd had bolstered me in whatever I turned my hand to. Organizational ability, you know, experience I needed, right. and so on. It was a good fit, obviously. Yeah, it was a good fit. 